Hello guys, it's unit 2 and part I. Today's topic is placenta. Placenta is disc in shape. It is a disc like structure. You know disc is like in round. Fleshy organ. Placenta is made up of flesh. And this placenta is connected by umbilical cord. Placenta is attached to mother. And umbilical cord is attached to fetus. And they both connect mother and fetus and this placenta is thick at the center and thin at edge if you see it is disc like in structure in middle it will be very thick in at the edges it will be very thin reddish in color it will be red in color and weight is around 500 grams volume is around 500 ml length is around no this length is around 40 to 50 centimeters diameter in length uh, is around 15 to 20 centimeters and at the center if you see the thickness this thickness it will be around 2.5 centimeter this placenta is both organ it's uh, partially fetus and partially mothers okay so if you see the placenta from the fetal view from the fetus side if you see the placenta it will be very soft shiny and attached to umbilical cord whereas if you see the placenta from the mother side it will be dull red color and it is not soft and shiny as it is in the fetal side and it will have 50 to 30 cotylates cotylates in sense it will be like this in placenta it will have like this 15 to 30 cotylates Development of placenta. Placenta actually starts developing at third week. Third week after fertilization. The very first villi that starts developed in the placenta is chorionic villi. See, at the time of implantation, uh, we can say this is the uterus wall. Now the ovum is embedded into it. This is implantation, okay. After entering it, this need blood. So, it starts spreading its connection. So, this connection is spreaded in the form of chorionic villi. This chorionic villi starts spreading its connection to find the maternal blood vessels. Because it need blood to survive. And after finding the mother's uh, maternal blood supply, both get start connected and this connection is known as synosis. Nutritive villas and anchoring villas. The villas or the connection which gets the nutrition is known as nutritive villa and the villas which help the, the assistant villas or the sub connected villas, the small villas which helps these main junctions are known as anchoring villas. The main villa is chorionic villa. Chorion fondosome. Here it they will have rich blood supply. Synosis 4 or 5 synosis junction join together and forms a junction. And that junction is known as chorionic fondosome. In short, if any villa provide more blood when there is a rich blood supply. And that villa is named as chorion fondosome. By the 10th week, by the 10th week from fertilization, fetal placenta will be fully developed. From the 12 to 20 week, the placenta will be weighting more than the fetus. Fetal will be, have, will be in a small weight, but placenta will be fully developed, so it will be weighting more than the fetus. After 20 week, fetal starts developing its hands, legs and other organs and at that time, Fetus starts weight more. Functions of placenta. Placenta plays a vital role in the growth and development of the fetus. The very first function is respiration. Placenta helps in exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide from mother to fetus. Next nutrition. Placenta supplies nutrition from the mother to the fetus. Next storage. Placenta stores glucose and fat and supplies to the baby when it is needed. Next protection. Placenta protects the baby from infection. 
placenta plays as a barrier and protects the baby from the infection next endocrine supply placenta supplies hormone from mother to the fetus like ig hormones which are very useful in the immunity development abnormalities of placenta the first is larger and heavier placenta this placenta is generally very big in size than the normal size and the weight is also more than the normal size normal weight is 500 g so here probably the placenta is more than 500 g and the length of the placenta is normally 40 to 50 cm and here the placenta's length will be more than 40 to 50 cm next smaller and lighter placenta here the placenta is smaller than the 40 to 50 cm and the lighter in the sense weight the weight of placenta is less than 500 g next is lighter colored placenta the placenta will be in normal shape and normal size but the color of the placenta is not reddish in color which indicates that baby is anemic conditioned the blood in the baby is less and it indicated by the color of the placenta next is tumor formation if the placenta has any tumor formation it can lead to the prematuration prematuration in the sense the birth of the baby will be before 9 months like that preterm birth that is occurred in the tumor formation placentas in fact of cotyledons okay this is like you know if placenta is like this there are many lines and there are cuttings which are been seen in the placenta and that is in fact of cotyledons edematous placenta this placenta is edematous it is swelled next placenta margitina here this is placenta okay in the margin side you can see a ring like structure formed in the margin side of the placentas there is a ring like structure which is formed it blocks the supply of blood from the fetus to mother circuvalent placenta okay this placenta it is attached to the this is womb okay and here the placenta is attached and that is connected to the baby for a purpose this is normal placenta but in this condition the placenta is slightly it will be disattached from the wall in some conditions this placenta is disattached in this middle in some conditions it is disattached in the corner next lobulated placenta lobulated placenta in the sense we had two kinds bi paternity tri paternity bi paternity in the sense one baby having two placenta tri paternity in the sense one baby having three placentas and these are the abnormalities of placenta amniotic fluid amniotic fluid is generally alkaline water alkaline water in the sense it's not acidic in nature because amniotic fluid is present in the womb with the baby if this is the womb and this is placenta and if this is the baby and here we have a water which is known as amniotic fluid this amniotic fluid is in alkaline in nature it is not acidic in nature and the function of this amniotic fluid is it helps in growth of the baby and helps in the development of the organs like lungs and other and helps in protection protecting the baby from infections and helps in the free movement these are the main functions of the amniotic fluid and next this amniotic fluid consists of protein carbohydrates lipids by the end of the gestation in the sense uh, at the very beginning of the gestation at the very beginning of the pregnancy this amniotic fluid is filled with proteins carbohydrates and lipids but at the end of the gestation that is around 8th and 9th month this amniotic fluid is filled with fetal urine all most of amniotic fluid is fetal urine and generally the color of the amniotic fluid is clear or pale straw color this is called meconium after the birth baby passes the first stool and that is called meconium this meconium is nothing but at the gestation period baby inhales or take in 
this amniotic fluid this comes out in the form of meconium next volume normal volume is around 800 ml there is two conditions which is seen related to amniotic fluid if the volume is more than 1500 ml that condition is known as polyhydramnios if the volume is less than 300 ml and that condition is known as oligohydramnios and this is about amniotic fluid i will provide questions after completing this whole chapter that's it for today guys let's meet in the next video until then stay tuned